Hello, this is Roger Bisbee here from the Skill Builder channel, and we've got a question that's coming from Alison. So, Alison's been great actually because she sent us lots of photographs, and we love lots of photographs. Don't just send us one photograph, send us any photographs, even if you don't think they're relevant. Send us photographs of your dog, your cat. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, this is an air brick, and you can see that this air brick is very low in the ground. And what's happening here is that there's water that's collecting in there and it's just pouring into the air bricks and obviously ending up under the floor. You can see a bit more damp here and uh, you can see the poor condition. That's the damp proof course, by the way, going above the air brick. Now, here you can see somebody's done a little bit of a uh, horrible repair there, but you can see that somebody's had a go at pointing in that bit above the air brick. And here's another shot that gives you another perfect example. Low air brick right beside a rainwater gully and signs of mold and damp on the wall. So you're beginning to get the picture. You're beginning to get the pattern of events here. What we're saying, like somebody's done a little bit of repair around here to this gully. It may well be that that gully was overflowing, that it got a bit blocked by debris and that it overflowed around there and that made the situation even worse but whatever is happening there she's got air bricks which are too low in the ground now when this house was built what they should have done this is a, a beam and block floor here so they've got ventilation under the floor area and what they should have done is put those air bricks under the floor as they have but they should have used telescopic vents which are basically things which move inside the cavity there's a kind of a black duct and it's telescopic and you just lift it up and you bring it up to a level which is above the ground so ideally you would put uh, it two bricks above the ground so that would be in this brick here so instead of the air brick being right down there the air brick ideally would be in this brick here or at a pinch in that brick there depending because obviously it's nice to have it on a whole brick but anyway this has been done wrongly and Alison's suffered the consequences and the consequences of this are that what she's got is damp and mold in the house and she's had this for years and years she said she's been fighting this particular thing for 20 years cleaning the mold off trying to get rid of it but it just kept coming back around the skirting boards up the walls just everywhere now this is interesting because if it were just a question of condensation you would expect that mold to be appearing at higher levels around the edges of the windows and all the rest of it but because it's appearing on those skirting boards at low level we've got to assume that what's happening is that there's damp under that floor which is trying to evaporate out and what it's doing is a damp membrane hopefully over the beam and block floor where the damp membrane comes up the sides of the insulation, the Celotex or whatever, it's creeping out because ideally what you'd have done is you'd put a wide DPC in there, damp proof course in there, and that would have overlapped the membrane that's coming up and the whole thing would have been tied in. But it's not done as often as it should be. And given the state of this build and the fact they didn't even bother using telescopic vents, you can bet your life they didn't do a very good job of sealing that damp proof membrane to the damp proof course. So what she's got is a lot of moisture that's collecting under this house and it's evaporating up through the floors, up around the sides, causing excess damp and excess mold. And she said, when I sent her the reply and said to her that what I suggest she should do about it she said thank goodness for that because everybody's been telling me that I'm you know I'm not mad but they've been telling her that she's wrong about this and that it's not a problem it definitely is a problem now what she could do in the meantime as a an interim measure take away this little bit of guard here dig out that area there so that she's got ground which is lower than the air brick so if any water does come in there rather than it flooding around here and going in the air brick it will be able to soak away she could put some gravel put that gravel back down if she likes and just basically get it so that it's soaking away from the air bricks and not collecting around there but the real answer to it is to lift those air bricks up by putting in those telescopic vents and that can be done by a bricklayer it's probably one or two days work for a job in bricklayer it's the kind of guy that comes around doing repairs and uh, even a good handyman could do it but it's it's quite hard to make 
the whole thing look nice so you want somebody who's good at pointing and so on to do that job but if she does that if she gets those telescopic vents and gets those air bricks up to a decent level then a lot of the problems will be solved because not only will it stop that water from going down under the floor it will give a better cross ventilation of the underfloor area and those air bricks will do the job there of designed and intended to do which is get a nice flow of air going under that floor to clear any residual moisture that's under that floor and take it away you can bet your life that there's probably not even a decent membrane under that floor normally you put something down like polythene sheet on top of the sub base on the top of the soil or whatever it is to stop any evaporation of groundwater coming up into that space that void that's under the floor so she's got probably a double whammy there she's got water pouring in and if there is a membrane there it's pouring in on top of the membrane or she hasn't got a membrane and it's evaporating up but whatever it is it's damp and i'll just mention one more thing and this is the joy if you like of having lots of photographs is that you can see what's going on and you can see that at some time this house has had cavity wall insulation put into it now i know a lot of people are going oh well there's your problem it's the cavity wall insulation that's causing the damp well it's not the cavity wall insulation that's causing the damp it will be if the damp is getting up and it's evaporating into that cavity obviously it will be soaking that cavity but in normal conditions if that were dry if that job had been done properly she wouldn't then have this problem with damp cavity wall insulation but it seems to me there's a lot of drying out to be done in that property and even when this is done all that cavity wall insulation if that's been soaked inside there will just have to dry out you know it's a very unfortunate situation but nothing wrong with cavity wall insulation if you're not in an exposed area and the masonry looks pretty good it looks pretty intact the pointing's good and if ever there were a problem with the cavity wall insulation a quick coat of storm dry over all the bricks would stop any penetrating damp i think most of it anyway and you wouldn't have problems with the cavity wall insulation i've done it on a number of occasions where people have had driving rain on the side of a house and it's been soaking in and soaking the cavity wall insulation quick one coat of storm dry and uh, it's back in business and you've solved the problem but there you go that's as i say the clues that you get from all these additional photographs is we could tell by these holes in the mortar that somebody has drilled that and pumped in a bit of cavity wall insulation so i hope that helps Alison, and hopefully your friends and neighbors will no longer think you're a nutcase people think i'm a nutcase but it doesn't really bother me that much mm -hmm.